tonight, live from the Inspired Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street, in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present Vegas Talk, starring Dylan Jorgensen, also featuring Preston Nelson, and music by yours truly, Downtown Frankie. Tonight's guest, we have Mark Rowland from the Metropolitan Gallery Las Vegas, Tamara Washington from Potluck Meal Prep, and your entertainment, Trice B, Phantom Magnetic. Ah, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming out, everybody. I really appreciate it. Okay, so our first guest is the executive director at the Metropolitan Gallery here in Las Vegas. Please give it up for Mark Rowland. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming out, Good player. To see you, Preston. What a crowd. Yeah, man. What a wonderful group, group of people, people, I'm you know? telling you. Yeah, you know. Thank you for coming out, Mr. Mark. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, you are the executive director at the Metro Palace and Gallery. Yes, the Metropolitan Gallery is actually the largest art exhibition facility mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. Right. We're on the second floor of the Neonopolis building uh, at Fremont Street in Las Vegas. 450 Fremont Street, Suite 270. Correct. Yep, uh, second floor upstairs, across mm -hmm. the street. Mm -hmm. And the days that y'all open is, uh, get, this, get this right, Wednesday to Saturday, 12, 5 p.m.? Absolutely. Nice. Wednesday through Saturday from noon till 5 o'clock p.m. Mm -hmm. What we really are is a showcase gallery. Uh, inside the space that we have, which is fairly large, we're 17,500 square feet, we feature over 400 paintings and probably about 60 different sculptures. Some of them from Las Vegas, mm -hmm. some of them for all the great artists that actually live in Las Vegas. Um, the downtown people that uh, exhibit in the museum, plus people from all over the world. We do a show every year, mm -hmm. which is called the International, um, uh, International Contemporary Masters, right. which actually is uh, formed by a group in California uh, where they've contacted a lot of artists from all different countries, and they pr produce a book where they actually show their things in uh, this publication. And the museum performs a service for this group in the way of giving them an exhibition once a year. Right. And of course, they pay for the exhibition. So, right. you know, who's kidding who, you know? So the original name, though, was the Southern Nevada Museum of Fine Arts. Why the change? Well, the name was really long, for starters. Southern Nevada Museum of Fine Art, when you start to type that out a few times, you start to realize that uh, it's very lengthy. It also put us alphabetically at the bottom of all the cultural events that were in Las Vegas. Right. Um, in addition to that, though, uh, the real reason for it was we wanted it to identify more with the city of Las Vegas. I mean, we have the Metropolitan Police Department in Las Vegas, and we are a downtown museum. Right. So the word metropolitan made a lot of sense to us. And also, we wanted to brand it with Las Vegas, so we became the Metropolitan Gallery Las Vegas. Yeah. But like a lot of other museums throughout the country and even overseas, a lot of people have said to me, why don't you have the name Art Museum right. in the title? And if you compare it to other places in London, there's the National Gallery, there's the Tate Gallery. In Chicago, where I'm originally from, uh, the art, there's the Art Institute of Chicago. Okay. So we have a lot of Chicagoans and a lot of New Yorkers living in Vegas. And what happens with a lot of these people from the big cities is when they finally get to Vegas, after they've been here for a couple of years and it's all the glitz and the glamour and the gambling and everything else that really attracted them, they start to miss some things from back home. Mm -hmm. And one of them is a cultural component. Right. They used to visit the big museums, yeah. okay? Yeah. Chicago, uh, you know, Chicago Art Institute, the Field Museum in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Whitney Museum in New York. Right. And they really need their museum fix, okay? On those nice, cool mornings, they like to pick up some coffee, walk to the museum, right. browse around, have a good time, and get some stimulation out of yeah. it. How long uh, have the art gallery been open? Well, the actually, the Southern Nevada Museum of Fine Art was actually founded eight years ago. Mm -hmm. It operated for six years under the direction of Joseph Palermo, who was the director. 
And he was also a very good friend of mine. He was one of the first people that I met in Vegas when I came from Chicago. And Joseph Palermo um, unfortunately got sick and passed away. Mm, and uh, when that happened, uh, I asked him, I said, what's going to happen to the museum? And he says, well, I don't know. He says, it's been a struggle, and downtown is tough, and maybe this isn't really an art community. I said, listen, I said, you've done all this work. I said, we need to continue it, and we need to build on it. Right. Yeah. And that's what we've done. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. So over the last two and a half years, I've been director, and right. we've had some fabulous shows. The yeah. very first one, which, which is one that I recommended to the previous director, which was... Um, uh, the Anne Frank show, yeah. because we have so many powerful people in Las Vegas that are Jewish. Right. What I mean is the casino owners, the mayor is Jewish, there are many Congress people that are Jewish. So it isn't that this is a Jewish town, it represents everybody. Right. We're probably one of the most diverse small cities on the planet. And uh, how long have you been ex uh, the executive director? For two and a half years. Two and a half years? Yes. Yeah. And, of course, the facility, because of the former director becoming ill, the, the facility was really in a severe state of decay. Right. So it took, a it took at least the first year just to sort of rebuild it and reinvigorate it and bring in new art, bring in new artists, right. and also to help support the community in a way that really makes sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, the museum now... Uh, has abandoned its old name, which is the Southern Nevada Museum of Fine Art, and we are now the Metropolitan Gallery, Las Vegas. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. But anyway, part, yeah. part of the reason for that was, too, is that we didn't want to be defined as selling, as being there to exhibit only fine art. Yeah. We wanted things which were broad. We wanted cultural component, yeah. ethnic art. We wanted African art. Yeah. Uh, when I came Tuesday, uh, just, you know, just to meet, like a little, just to see how the gallery was, which is very amazing. It's very big. Mm -hmm. A lot of people really don't know know it until they get there. Yeah. Except for the people that's already part of it, that's you know, have memberships though. Mm -hmm. But I saw that it was a lot of sculptures. It was a lot of sculpture. And you and took the history behind the sculptures and like how much that you have. Mm -hmm. Well, right now we're featuring an artist called Renzo, which by the way happens to live in Las Vegas. Although he doesn't show in any of the galleries. Thank right, you. right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Right. And if you check out our website, which is www.mglv.org, mm -hmm. you'll see some of these things that are there. Mm -hmm. um, but the gallery uh, or museum, in this particular case, is really an educational experience. Right. And we get a number of the schools that come in. In fact, we just had one in today. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, uh, the Edelson School has been in when we had the Jewish exhibit, yep. the yep. Anne Frank. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the ex exhibitions that we brought in from Israel and from New York for the Jewish event uh, is our very first one. Mm -hmm. uh, it also expanded out. And what we ended up with was the museum got leased yeah. so that people from uh, the local JCC and APAC, which is a... Uh, American Israeli Action Committee mm -hmm. in uh, Washington D.C. actually flew people out to the museum yep. to see the exhibit. Yeah. yeah. So we're bringing in other people, and the museum staff is like you folks here is all voluntary. Right. And uh, so nobody gets paid, <laughs> but uh, they're doing what they love to do, yeah. and that's a good that's a big yeah. part. Sometimes of it. the best stuff is best stuff even for your life is when money's not involved, you know. That's exactly. You don't really know about that, but so many life factors kick in, too, so yeah. people got to make tough decisions. But you was talking about the exhibit. How many different exhibits do you do a year? Well, How we, many so major? we have VIP events, which are for members only, mm -hmm. and that's usually when a big show is going to open up. Right. And uh, we have about four or five of those a year, mm -hmm. and they're usually themed as a historical exhibition or uh, one that's part of popular culture. Right. And we try to do a balance between exhibitors that come from outside of Las Vegas, mm -hmm. but also we try to make sure that we include the businesses and other wonderful things that Las Vegas has uniquely yeah. to offer to the arts. So on an average, in, on an average we exhibit, uh, how many people usually show up? We usually get anywhere between three and five hundred yeah. on that night, mm. and we only have a capacity of a thousand yeah. people. So, 
when all those people come up, it's basically more of experience for them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not just uh, they just going there to see art, different cultures. But he was saying that uh, a lot of celebrities, that a lot of artists that have paintings there also come too, which which uh, people can also take photos with them and uh, interact with them to really get their perspective on how the art was made. Exactly. The membership, when they come to an event, usually the artists are there, and they're fairly famous artists like Renzo. We've also done celebrity events before, not at this facility, but I used to do um, gallery events with Ronnie Wood of the Rolling Stones, mm -hmm. and uh, we've done them um, with um, sports celebrities, uh, with Michael Jordan before, right. yeah. and um, and uh, there's and Muhammad Ali. I used to be a printmaker in Chicago before I yeah, became a museum that. director, yeah. and I used to do all the limited edition, too, right? Right. Father, like, fam, you know. Yeah, I'm third generation in the art business, so we're kind of lifers about this, That's you know. And I know most of you, you probably in your families, uh, you have a history of working in one particular field. Mm -hmm. But the apple usually doesn't fall that far from the tree, so. Yeah, how do you see the art from when you was younger to now how, how it is now today? Well, today, I mean, it's all going digital. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, when you take a look, I mean, I've been in this industry for over 40 years, and it used to be when even it affects the artists themselves. Uh, they used to take and graph off a canvas, and they used to take and draw lines on it to reproduce an image before they began to paint. Right. Nowadays, they basically photograph stuff, they digitally print it on mm -hmm. the canvas, yep. they get a start, mm -hmm. and then they take it from there. In addition to that, they're getting images from all over the world. Right. They don't even have to go to those locations. So sometimes they'll take images from three or four different countries and they'll basically combine them right. in a montage yeah. and create a composition that is worldly, yeah. but they can do it all from their own studio. Yeah. So the WWAB. WWAB is Worldwide Art Books. Oh. And these books are available at the museum. Actually, they're, they're a $95 book on Amazon. Jeez, but nice. we give them away free with a $30 membership. That's a year? Annual Yearly membership. membership? Yeah, monthly. annual membership annual is only $30. The so look, you though, can see we're not in it for the money, right? Yeah. So Woo! from looking through the books, <laughs> from looking through the books, you definitely see a lot of high quality and great art, different art, art sculptures. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing, especially yeah. now how this world is definitely changing yes. at a fast, super, super fast pace. So you, you're definitely taking it back to where what, what is really important, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I appreciate it. You know what I mean? I Thank really you. Do. I really do. Well, just remember the Metropolitan Gallery of Las Vegas, we're the best kept secret in Vegas. Mm -hmm. At this particular point, we haven't gone public and actually this little interview. Yeah. This is the first time we stepped out of hey, our comfort zone. So. Let's get it. <laughs> okay. Hey. So let's, uh, so Wednesday to Saturday, noon to 5 p.m.? Correct. Wednesday through Saturday, noon to 5 p.m. You would, Saturdays are free. Yeah. You can come into the museum, yeah, check sense. us out. Okay. I'm sure that when you finally make your rounds through it and when you get a chance to talk to us about all the events that are coming up, that you'll be inspired enough to say, that, you know, this is a pretty good gamble. This is something I could do. Right. right. And uh, people really enjoy the museum because unlike Eastern museums where you come in and you walk around, just look, and you leave, yeah. and it's sort of quiet, we don't do that. Right. Because this is Vegas. Right. right. Okay? And our museum isn't, uh, you know, it isn't a Greek revival building with white columns. You walk into it, and it's a 20-foot ceiling, and we have neon lights across the entire ceiling. Right. Because originally, the facility we were in used to be a food court of all things. Right. Okay? But a museum in Vegas can set its own standard. Right. It doesn't have to copy museums from around the world. We're from Vegas. We break all the rules. Yes, sir. We reinvent ourselves. Yes, sir. And it's the city of the future. Okay. And so should the museum be. Yeah. yeah. So, Mr. Mark Waller, thank you very much for coming out. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Preston. Yes. Get hungry, yeah. All right. Well, you have a lovely.
of our next guest. Uh, the first time I knew that she had a passion for food was the Super Bowl, when she brought in the most amazing spread ever. And instead of just being able to eat it and watch the game like I expected, uh, this woman, Tamara, kept coming up saying, oh, is it too, too spicy, too salty, too everything you can imagine? And I spent half of the Super Bowl talking about how to perfect the food that I already thought was some of the best food I ever had. And that's when I knew she had a passion for food. And I'm excited almost a year later to see that she's building it into a business. So please put your hands together for Tamara Washington. Come on out. Yeah, welcome to the show, Tamara. Oh, it's so good. All right. Gosh, I guess you're gonna be Tamara Taylor soon, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. that's crazy. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so I want to start by talking about your passion for food. Where did it start? Uh, it started, both of my grandmothers were very good cooks, so it started with me watching them, what they did, trying to mimic the recipes that they created, and um, it just began there. And my, you know, I just was always around people that like to cook, so. Yeah, do you remember yeah. your earliest memory of, of, like, time your passion showed? Um, the earliest memory would be probably with um, my grandmother cooking for Thanksgiving um, and <laughs> dropping the cake on the floor and having to cr could totally make the cake over again. Oh. Like, I'm like, Granny, no, let's just pick it up and we can just pretend like it didn't <laughs> happen. She's like, no, 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 no. It's like, no, it That's not that it how doesn't this go works. that way. Right. <laughs> well, so what about cooking for others? Like, I mean, obviously you loved cooking, but when did the passion sort of become watching the pleasure on other people's um, faces? Well, what, where it, what, where it began, where I wanted to cook for other people, um, probably more so with my mom. She came home one day saying that the doctor was a quack. And I'm like, why is the doctor a quack? And she's <laughs> like, well, because he told me to stop eating meat. I'm like, well, maybe you might want to listen to him a little bit. And she's like, well, I'm not going to no, eat rabbit quack, food. Yeah, like yeah, he's like, yeah, he's a quack. Yeah. We're not going to listen to I'm him. going to give up on meat. Right. So um, I... Um, I wanted her, she's like, well, I don't want to eat rabbit food for the rest of my life. And I'm like, well, you know, you can eat other things that aren't rabbit food that are still good. So that's where, where it came a passion to try to cook for other people. Okay. I wanted to create healthier uh, wanted recipes. To yeah. make rabbit food taste good. Exactly, In exactly. Not so many words, but yeah. Right, right. Okay. Um, so you always cook without pork. I'm curious, is that like a religious thing or is that something mm. you just don't? Well, the pork thing them. probably came from um, my um, fiance where he he doesn't eat pork and I, I haven't cooked in recipes for years with pork, but uh, I am very, um, I, I think it's just a better a better choice. Okay. I try to use chicken and turkey instead of beef and pork in all of my recipes. Uh, for instance, one of the recipes that I like to uh, make or that I've tried to recreate was um, instead of rib tips, I make turkey tips. Ooh. And yeah, so, uh, and <laughs> Yeah, you get hungry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they've had some, some of the people out there. But yeah, I, um, you know, I'm not the person that created that, of course, but I, I, that's something I tried to replicate out here in Vegas to try to get people to uh, eat a little bit better and still be able to have that same flavor profile that they're used to. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And what's a flavor profile? Um, just, you know, um, for instance, we have uh, uh, Italian beef and sausage in, in Chicago. And it's a really good sandwich everyone enjoys. Well, I make it with Italian Italian turkey and sausage. Is I it, make is it, it yeah. true that a tongue has five senses? Like bitter, taste, sweet? You yeah. know that, you know, the yeah. little chart it thing? It does, yeah, mm. it does. So you make food designed to, like, land on the tip of your tongue and then go to the side or like well no that's how not do you know where they're going to chew it i'm <laughs> saying if that tongue thing's right <laughs> well you know the peppers like different peppers are at different parts of your tongue so for me i try to be careful with it because i don't want to sweat like you know in okay, certain yeah. places so yeah yeah because in theory it seems like an instruction manual like chew this you know to the right upper part would be ideal i don't think anyone's thinking it. that way when they're eating they're just you chomping know, i, I usually bite my tongue I when i'm eating directions <laughs> yeah. um so let's talk about this chili cook off story cuz that that was really fun to hear Oh, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of won an award, and you, you tell the story. Well, yeah. Well, I was uh, I was the facilitator of a co chili cook-off, right. and That's so... Seems like a great role exactly. for you. Exactly. Yes. So uh, one person didn't show up for the chili cook-off, and I had a chili there that I was just going to give a samples to people before the cook-off, you know, was ready to go. And I decided to enter my chili because we needed another chili for the cook-off. Um, and... My chili actually won the cook-off, but because I was the person that created the cook-off, yeah, I, I couldn't accept it. So the second person in line that won that chili cook-off happened to be my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and so she's actually the real, she was the winner. So she, yeah. 
But she's really the winner because her chili's better than mine anyway. It's just I knew I knew what the categories but you were. You sick first place. Well, this yeah. Well, really well, I knew good. what the categories were, so right. I was able to you know have the most vegetables or those spiciest chili because right. I knew what the category. Right. Right. So I I had to forfeit, yet. which means that my mother really won that <laughs> that contest, and um, that's all that that's all, all to right, it. My mom won. Hands here, down, people. she won. My mom won. Everybody, mom won. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Go awesome. mom. That's <laughs> awesome. You're like, oh, we can't qualify that one. Yeah, I can't um, qualify. So, okay, so talk about this plan to build build a business. Because I, this is, you know, I'm passionate about people who get entrepreneurship started. And that is a really exciting thing for me mm -hmm. to see you doing. What do you want the business uh, potluckmealprep.com to be, how are you going to go from just being someone passionate about food to a first-time business? Well, where I, um, I chose to jump in was I want to create meals for people uh, on the go. People are always, you know, on the go. They're working. They're busy. You know, their kids, they need lunch. Um, so what I'd like to do is uh, create meals for people and deliver them to their homes. They don't have to do anything. You know, it's already prepped for them. They don't have to take it out the yeah, box and, and put and it I'm together. And I'm guessing that's what this is, That right? is what this okay. is, so yeah, you yeah. Walk, walk well, yeah, what you well, get? what it is is just a simple little uh, kid's meal. It has a uh, wrap with turkey and uh, and uh, lettuce yeah, in it. Log. I recognize yeah. that and, one. Well, one that, of my I just, I, I kind of heard that it was one of your <laughs> favorites here, so I... Oh, uh, that's for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Anton are the best, man. He likes Anton See how many ants we got in... Oh, it's just peanut butter. Well, the ants, they fell off. This is just a log. Yeah, it's just a log. <laughs> the, ants aren't, the ants aren't there anymore. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's most of what I like all mixed together. Peanut butter yeah. on a log. Ah, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. Go. So, um, yeah, but um, kids' meals uh, for people, I would much prefer my child to eat uh, something like this in lunch with a kiwi and carrots and celery than eating uh, pizza or cheeseburgers that are made out of soy and all that type of stuff. So I, I just, you know, uh, at five bucks a meal, I mean, it's not very much to purchase something like that no, for your child to right. eat a good and meal. You so. And the cool thing is you deliver it too, right? So yes, if you don't have yes, time to like... Yes, three times a week. Yeah, so you can mm -hmm. get like six, seven of these at a time every few days Absolutely. and just eat them. That's if you awesome. want them fresh, I make them fresh to yeah. order so they're not pre-made. Well, I mean, living downtown, you know, li living at the Gold Spike, I don't have a full-size kitchen, mm -hmm. something like this mm -hmm. would be a great option, so. Yeah, for people who just don't have enough time. If you work out, you really don't have enough time to prep your meals a lot, so. Yeah, yeah it's really good. Okay, so final question, just being, what do you hope that it becomes? Like, um, there, I can think of a couple meal, like, prep services. How do you think yours is going to stand out? Um, well, uh, probably because I would like to prep for kids' lunches. That's something I don't see a lot of people uh, doing right now is uh, doing the kids' lunches. I also, like, like I said, people that work out, um, they fi find that, that some of that time is split between trying to get the nutrition that they need and So do you make the plan out. for them, or do they pick the food? Or? Um, I, yeah, uh, if they tell me what, whatever, you know, calorie, however many calories they want to stay under, I can definitely do that for them. Okay. So and then the definitely. website's got a bunch of options for the food? Yes, yes, different options um, for, you know, we have wraps. I have things like chili, which... Um, oh, yeah, chili, yeah, the award-winning yeah. chili? Yeah, award-winning. Uh, Same well ratio of everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm going to start <laughs> with then when I do my first order. So, okay. all right, let's give a big hand to Tamara Washington, uh, go that, soon to be Tamara Taylor. Go to www.potluckmealprep.com and uh, sign on and see what we, what we have cooking. Okay, okay? potluckmealprep.com. Yep. Mm, give you. it up for Tamara Washington. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm excited to see how big this business becomes. Ladies and gentlemen, Trice B, the Phantom Magnetic.
That's our show. We would like to thank our guests this evening. Thank you to our cast and crew and to our live studio audience and to all you Vegas talkers at home. Remember, all of you are welcome to become a part of our live studio audience every Thursday night, 9 p.m. at the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas and Fremont Street. Come party with us with the cast and crew for the official after party right here on the rooftop at Inspire. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Vegas Talk Show. Thank you. Salamat, salamat. Peace, love, and be kind to one another.